It has tech, an outdoor lifestyle, the arts, festivals, great food scene, a really good school district, shopping, entertainment, all this just five miles from the beach. What city can I be talking about in Los Angeles? That is Culver City. That's what it's like to live in Culver City. So video's over. No, I'm just kidding. We're gonna go over in detail about these items, share with you what I think it's like to live, what it's like to live in Culver City. Now keep in mind, Culver City is a small, small city within the greater Los Angeles area. It is enveloped by Los Angeles, surrounded by Los Angeles. There's been tremendous amount of growth. It is a lot different than the way it was when I grew up. Now I grew up in Mar Vista, which is a neighborhood right next to Culver City, but I spent a lot of time in Culver City because that's where my grandparents, my aunt lived, and it was not the same. You didn't really go to downtown Culver City. The Arts District was kind of defunct. Really no reason to go there. It was just kind of this sleepy suburb that no one really talked about. It was known for the movie industry many, many, many years ago. It kind of got a little quiet. Sony, Sony Picture Studios was there for a, still there for a long time. Uh, and the Culver Studios, that's all been there, but that's kind of it. That's what Culver City was known for. Now, don't get me wrong, the movie industry is still vibrant, uh, continues to be vibrant in the Culver City area, but it is known for so much more these days, and we're gonna get into it right now. Okay, getting into the video of what it's like to live in Culver City, we are gonna start off with the first topic, and that is location. I think the location of Culver City is prime, especially if you wanna live in the western portion of Los Angeles. You were just five miles from the beach. So you don't have to pay the exorbitant prices that you would have to pay along the coast if you wanted to live in Venice, Santa Monica, Marina del Rey, Pacific Palisades. There's super high-end luxury real estate there. Culver City is not exactly cheap, but you are not paying those prices and you're just five miles away. So it's really easy to get to the beach access and have that beach lifestyle. What I also like about Culver City is that if you're into more of the Hollywood or you know nightlife scene, you can get in, you can get to Hollywood and Beverly Hills, and probably within around 30 minutes or so. And again, you don't have to live right within all the uh, the entertainment district. You can still kind of be in a little bit more quiet place like Culver City. Uh, it is also close to LAX, so maybe about 10, 15, 15, 20 minute drive to LAX. Where if you're someone that travels for work or travels for pleasure easy easy access also really close to the football stadium sofi stadium in inglewood again you know 50, 20 minutes and you're there uh, and if you're someone that goes into downtown for work or if that's just what you want to do you can easily uh, access downtown again about 30 minutes or so uh, depending on traffic 40 minutes uh, 45 minutes to downtown you can also jump on the expo line which runs through um, which runs through culver city so you can get to the beach and downtown if you're not someone that wants to be in your car, the Expo Line runs right through Culver City. You are also really close to the 405 Freeway, which is your north-south artery going, uh, connecting to the San Fernando Valley and the South Bay. And again, if you wanna go east and west, you're by the 10 Freeway, taking you to Santa Monica and on through to the downtown area. So Culver City location-wise, it's really hard to beat because you are basically right in the middle of the action and yet you don't have to pay the high prices of the coast and you don't have to live with right in the action and more of the congestion if you're talking about West Hollywood and Beverly Hills. Now, surrounding neighborhoods would be Mar Vista, Ladera Heights, and Palms, just to get an idea if you're looking at a map. As a reminder, I'm Dave Fine with The Real Estate Dads, a real estate agent right here in Los Angeles, and my team and I love helping people move to and relocate to Los Angeles neighborhoods, surrounding areas, and Culver City. So if you are thinking about making that move, make sure you reach out to us, text, email, phone call, WhatsApp, whatever's easier for you, we've got your back when moving here. And I love doing videos of what it's like to live, work, and play in LA. So make sure you subscribe, tap the bell to get notified. If you like what you see, tap, the, uh, if you like what you see, hit the like button and comment below, ask questions, make comments. I'm always responding and happy to hear from you. All right, we're on to our next topic of what it's like to live in Culver City and we're gonna go with entertainment. Now there is no shortage of entertainment in Culver City and this is something a little bit on the newer side. 15 years ago, Culver City was not a place to be, it was not a place to go. In fact, when I was growing up a lot longer than 15, minutes, 15 years ago, uh, Culver City was just kind of a sleepy suburb uh, within Los Angeles that no one really went to. You, know, you had the movie industry that's always been something that's there. Um, but outside of that, there's no reason. I mean, for me, Culver City was going to my grandparents' house or my aunt's house, 
and walking in the neighborhood, I'd go to the local gas station with my grandfather, pick up some donuts because he knew the owner there. Then I walked to the local hardware store, B&B Hardware on, on Washington Boulevard, which is no longer there, sadly. It was a neighborhood hardware place. But that's kind of it. There's, They had some restaurants, they had some shopping, but not a place to go. You said Culver City and you really, no one heard about it or knew about it. Now is completely different. You have a very vibrant downtown area that has been revitalized, cent centered around the Culver Hotel, uh, and you have everything you want there. They've got restaurants, uh, boutique shopping, coffee houses, and people are eating outside because almost every restaurant has this outside patio because the weather's so amazing. And they've made it really pedestrian friendly where they've got dedicated bike paths, they've got a dedicated bus lane if you're into that. Uh, and they've really encouraged a lot of people, kind of this walkability of Culver City and you can get everything you want. They have a movie theater right downtown, the Culver Theater. And if you like more of a live performance, they've got the Kirk Douglas Theater and the Cary Grant Theater right there, part of Sony Studios. So a lot of culture and a lot of entertainment right there just in the downtown area. And it's somewhere that I really enjoyed going. One of my favorite restaurants there was Ugo. It's an Italian place. They've got a little wine tasting room as part of it. Parking's pretty easy too. They've got several parking structures. Uh, you gotta pay for it, but uh, some places validate you. Sometimes you get some free parking uh, if you're there less than a couple of hours. But it is a it's a great place to be, and they continue to grow and continue to revitalize. So if you are really into food and coffee, I mean they've got gastro pubs, they've got barbecue, they have some high end restaurants, casual eats, they've got pizza places. You name it, it's there, and it is a destination for many people, not just within Culver City but surrounding areas. Now, just adjacent to the Culver City downtown area. East of that is the Arts District. Again, it's right there, so you can easily get to it if you're in downtown, so you can really make a day of it. Downtown Culver City Arts District, because there there's also uh, some boutique shops, some great restaurants, Mexican food, Italian places, more pubs. But what's really cool there is that they actually have about 30 art studios that are there. And you may not even know just walking by, but they're there, and what's really cool is once a year they do the annual art walk and roll. Yes, walk and roll. Where all these studios open up and you can, uh, on one day or one weekend, and you can come through the studios, look at the local artists, see what they're doing. They've got music going, they've got food vendors. And it's a really, really neat experience because these are local artists showing off their work all on the same day. And I've done it a few times. Uh, and I, every time I go, it's just it's a great experience. Now, in addition to that, they have the Culver City Farmers Market, which is in the downtown area where they shut down one of the streets. The local farmers come on through, and that's uh, I still think they're doing it on Tuesdays. I don't think that's changed, uh, but that's a really neat place. Now, it is a small farmers market, but it's a farmers market right there in Culver City, and it is uh, got great fresh produce, and it's something that I enjoy going to as well. They also have markets that are. Uh, there they've got Trader Joe's which is this local iconic market uh, in the LA area and people just love their Trader Joe's including me uh, I don't think it gets any better than that but they've got right there right between downtown and the Arts District now in addition to those main entertainment spots you also have the Culver Center now not so much entertainment but if you want to go there for your grocery shopping uh, some casual eats and some restaurants uh, they've got a clothing store they've got a fitness center there that's also pretty adjacent to the downtown area just west so if you're looking at a map you've got culver center uh then in between then you have to the east of that is downtown culver city and then to the east of that is the arts district so all your entertainment your hub is pretty much in that one location but culver city is a small place as i mentioned it's only about forty thousand people and i believe it's only about five square miles so it's it's not that big uh so culver city does have a lot of entertainment options it's Packed, especially for a small city and for what it has to offer and you're also close of course as I mentioned if you want the beach entertainment it's five miles away and if you want uh, if you want to party till 2 a.m. you can head into Beverly Hills and West Hollywood because I will say most establishments in Culver City close around 10 p.m. Uh, maybe midnight for some of the pubs and the bars but uh, they don't there's not a whole lot of places that you're clubbing or partying at but if you want more of kind of a more sit-down casual entertainment that Culver City's got it, got you covered. All right, third on our list of what it's like to live in Culver City, we're gonna talk about the outdoor lifestyle. Now, if you're like me, I love outdoor lifestyle, especially if you're gonna be living in Los Angeles and taking advantage of that sun that's about 300, 320 days a year, you've gotta be outdoors. And 
Culver City has you covered. They've got an amazing park system uh, throughout the throughout the city. It's really well maintained, and they're pretty large parks. And a lot, you can see that it's utilized quite a bit. So we're going to start off with a little bit more of a smaller park, uh, Carlson Park, and that is adjacent to the downtown area. Now this is a really cool spot because. It is a true neighborhood park. You've got houses surrounding the park, really nothing else. It's tucked right in the neighborhood. Now, there's a playground, a uh, covered eating area, but that's kind of it. Otherwise, it's a big grass area. But you will see daily, and especially on the weekends, everyone living in that neighborhood and surrounding areas, they come there, they throw down a blanket, and they just enjoy it. It's, so, it's covered by trees, so there's actually quite a bit of shade. And you see people throwing parties there, kids' parties, adult parties. Just no drinking at the park. That is a rule. It is a law. Uh, but it, and and what's nice is you can walk down the street one block and you're in downtown Culver City. So again, you could have a little picnic at the park and then go to a movie. Um, and it's just right there and I and tucked the neighborhood. I love it. Now a little further um, a little further west, you have Veterans Park. Now this is a larger municipal park where they've got a pool. Uh, much bigger playground area. They've got baseball diamonds, sports courts there. And this is also kind of tucked in the neighborhood as well, surrounded by homes. So I will say it runs along Overland Avenue and Washington Boulevard, which are larger thoroughfares, but the other sides are actually surrounded by homes. So not quite as quaint and quiet as Carlson Park, but Veterans Park, uh, it's got a big auditorium. They do performances there. They've got uh, they do festivals there. They've got gem shows. They've got all different types of trade shows there. They do holiday specials there. It's a really cool park to be in and Culver City again does maintain it really nicely. Now, let's say you're something you're looking for something a little bit more scenic with a little bit more hiking. Culver City has that too. Yes, Culver City as small as it is has an actual hillside uh, that we'll get to in a minute that uh, it kind of quenches your thirst for a park and a little bit of hiking trail and I will say it has some of the most spectacular views of all of LA. You get up there on a clear day, you can see downtown Los Angeles, especially right after it rains. I love being outside uh, hiking right after it rains because the air is crisp, the, the storm blew through and it is the most beautiful skies that you will come across uh, in the Los Angeles area. I mean, I, I say more beautiful skies anywhere in the country. Uh, with the views that you get there. It is incredible. Now the park I'm talking about is called Culver City Park with the Baldwin Hills scenic overlook and they have a set of steps that people are there constantly throughout the day and it is heavily trafficked on the weekends and after work where it is a big flight of steps. Uh, you're in nature so it feels like you're hiking and you get your workout and there are a lot of people working out there. Now uh, people talk about these steps versus Runyon Canyon which is a big popular hiking area closer to Hollywood and people will talk about Runyon Canyon all day long but I think if you want to be less seen and more about your workout and just kind of more peaceful and relaxed and that's what you're there for then I would go to the Baldwin Hill Scenic Overlook if it was me. They also have a dog park there, they've got a skate park, they got baseball fields, They'll actually the Culver City Little League is right up there. Uh, they got open land, as I said, hiking trails with great views. And so it's a really cool spot. Now that's kind of right outside the arts district. It's where a lot of the uh, smaller studios, you'll see a lot of post-production studios around there, digital studios right around there, and some gastro pubs that's really uh, close to there too. It's also on the other side, you have, side note, you've got West LA College, which is a community college, not technically part of Culver City, but um, it is on the edge of it. So West LA College is right behind that scenic overlook in that park over there. Now I want to mention another really cool outdoorsy advent, uh, aspect to Culver City and that is the Bayona Creek. Now if you're coming from a place where you've got a lot of nature and you've got rivers and creeks you probably look at this and be like yeah, it's just a, it's, a, it's a concrete canal with the water coming through it and this is true but if you're living in Los Angeles where you're not used to seeing rivers and creeks but you got the ocean, which is very unique to, to Los Angeles, and a lot of people can't make claim to the ocean lifestyle like we can. But it has this cool creek that ultimately runs out into the ocean, and they've revitalized this where they've kind of upkeep the environment around it, they've encouraged uh, growth of the vegetation around it, and you can actually kayak and canoe in there. Um, some people fish in there towards getting closer to the ocean. I don't know if I would do that. But it also has a bike path that runs along it. 
and it takes you all the way into the Marine Del Rey. Now, this is something that's kind of near and dear to my heart because that's something I did with my grandfather. I was super close to him, my, my grandfather, when I was growing up. And on the weekends, we would go for these bike rides. He lived by Washington and Sentinella, and we would take Sentinella up maybe a couple of miles to the Bayona Creek bike path. We enter the bike path and we would ride until we get to the ocean, Marina Del Rey. It's something special you can do. And what, what I like about it being so close, you don't have to take your car to the beach. You don't have to take your car to the bike path along the beach. You can actually just ride there straight from Culver City. And I think it's a really cool thing to do. If you like the outdoors, you like bike paths and you don't wanna be surrounded by cars, you take Bayona Creek all the way through and you can enjoy everything that the marina has to offer. And you can also connect to Santa Monica and the beach, South Bay Beach cities like Redondo Beach, Manhattan Beach, and Hermosa Beach. So as you can see, Culver City really does have a outdoor lifestyle that is fairly unique for such a small city and being in Los Angeles. Okay, we're in our fourth topic of what it's like to live in Culver City, and we're gonna call it industry leaders. Now, many, many, many years ago, Sony Studios, Culver Studios, that's all you had some of the movie industry. But now when people think Culver City, uh, especially if you live in a surrounding areas, you know that there is a lot of big tech companies, a lot of big entertainment companies, and a lot of people seeking Culver City as to be their headquarters in their home base, just because it has become a destination. Now it's kind of the chicken or the egg thing. We're not sure exactly, are they coming this way because there's so much talent that live in Culver City in the areas and they know if they put their headquarters there, they're gonna get the right people to fill those spots? Or is it that they're going to this destination that encourages redevelopment and revitalization of the area, bringing in the talent? Either way, they're known for some large companies and, and big employment like Apple, Sony Studios, Culver Studios, Amazon, HBO, Beats, NFL, and so many other content creation companies and digital creation companies, as well as studios, it is actually home to over 40 startup tech companies. So Culver City, as you can see, has become quite the destination, whereas prior years, again, 15, 20 years ago, this was not the case. Again, a sleepy town, your kind of your retail stores, and that's kind of it outside of the studios. But now, um, and you'll see really close to downtown, they're continuing to build and, and develop those areas where they're doing a lot of mixed use projects. So Culver City is becoming a place where uh, it's becoming known as an industry leader. You have Silicon Beach, which is more of like Playa Vista, Marina Del Rey, Venice, and Santa Monica. Now they haven't quite named Culver City or made it part of Silicon Beach with all the tech companies, but it is becoming known, but it is becoming famous for more of contemporary industries and a destination to be. And as I mentioned before, if you are someone that's in the career of these industries, you can live, work, and play right in the city of Culver City, and you don't have to endure the horrific commute when living in Los Angeles in general. And that, I think, is a huge benefit to living in Culver City. Okay, our fifth topic of what it's like to live in Culver City, and we're gonna call it a city within a city. So as I mentioned, Culver City is its own city. It's not a neighborhood, it's not an area, it is an actual city within the Los Angeles city boundaries. So what this means is it has its own services and there's a lot of benefits to that because when living in such a large city like Los Angeles, they're spread out. They're spread thin, fire service, police service, education, uh, utilities, uh, all, all trash services, it's all spread so thin because they've got to cater to such a big population. Well, what's unique and really cool about Culver City is it has its, it's its own entity. It has its own government, its own city council. It has its own police department, its own fire department. So when you make those calls, they have a tendency of reacting a bit quicker uh, and more efficiently, more effectively than I would uh, compared to Los Angeles. And it has its own school district. Now, why is that important? Well. When you look up schools in Los Angeles, it can get kind of dicey. It really, really depends on what neighborhood that you live in within Los Angeles to find the good schools. Elementary schools, middle schools, high schools. There are some good ones in Los Angeles, but you have to find those right spots. And then housing is a lot more expensive in those better school neighborhoods. Now, I'm, I'm strictly talking public schools at this point. Now, and in LA, it's hard to find really solid middle schools and really solid high schools. Elementary is a little bit easier, but in Culver City, it has its own. It's the Culver City School District, and they're its own self entity. They don't. They're not beholden to LA. And if you look at GreatSchools.org, if you look that up for the scores, you'll see that Culver City is running eights and nines for their element 
uh, scores of eights and nines for their elementary all the way up to high school. And it's run a lot more effectively, a lot more efficiently. They have a lot more local control. And so that makes the schools uh, just function a lot better. So people actually move into Culver City specifically for the school. So something that you get with being its own entity. Also, they run their own library system. Now it's funny, when I grew up, I had several libraries. I grew up in Mar Vista, surrounding neighborhood, but Mar Vista is technically part of Los Angeles. So there were some libraries that were uh, closer to me that were part of the Los Angeles library system, but I chose to go to Culver City because it just, it was run better, it had more resources, I felt like it was more up to date with its resources, and, and I still think it's probably still the case today. So it does have its own library system. As I mentioned, it's got a great park system and they tend, in my opinion, they keep their parks a little bit cleaner than they do in Los Angeles. And we also have to talk about the homeless issue because being its own entity, they have their own rules and regulation when it comes to homelessness. And as you've seen in my other videos, the homeless population um, is kind of out of control in Los Angeles. And it's gotten worse, a lot worse during the pandemic and it's a lot more tolerated in Los Angeles and the neighborhoods within Los Angeles. Culver City is not the case. It actually was, it was interesting. You can run down Venice Boulevard and on one side of the street is Los Angeles and the other side is Culver City. Los Angeles, you see basically these tent cities running along there right under the underpass. Culver City, empty, blank, because they didn't really allow that. Now, Again, I'm not getting into the reasons of homelessness. Uh, I think it's a huge issue and I think it's terrible that people are living this way and I think their people can be helped. But I will say when it is also a safety and health issue and Culver City does a much better job at, I, I think, dealing with the homeless issue than Los Angeles. So because it's its own city, it can implement its own rules and because the voters can vote in Culver City differently than they can in Los Angeles, or they're not as affected by the greater LA uh, politics, then you'll see that Culver City is a lot more effective dealing with the homeless population. All right, the sixth item we're gonna talk about of what it's like to live in Culver City, and I hinted this at the beginning, we're gonna talk about cost of housing. It's probably something you've been thinking about or wondering. Man, Culver City sounds like a great place to live, but what is it gonna cost to, to live here? What's gonna cost for housing? Now I mentioned, it is not as expensive as Marina Del Rey, Venice, Santa Monica, or even a lot, a lot of parts of Mar Vista, but it is still pretty pricey and there's no sugar coating that. Anytime you live on the west side of Los Angeles, including Culver City, you're gonna be paying quite a bit. Now, Culver City is made up of a lot of different neighborhoods and each neighborhood will have its own price point. And the way it's gonna work is, the closer you are to kind of the downtown arts district, the higher the price it's gonna be. And then they also have a hill section, which we'll get into and I'll tell you what it is. It is also pricey you're there because you're a little bit away from it all and you've got some really great views. So let's talk about in general what the cost of a single family home in Culver City, three bedroom, three bath, about 1400 square feet. The median price is gonna be $1,500,000. Yep, I know, sticker shock, especially if you're not from the LA area. Uh, but again, keep in mind that same home in parts of Mar Vista could be closer to 2 million. And if you're in Santa Monica, uh, then forget it, two and a half million, three million. So now let's talk about condo lifestyle. So for a condo, the median price in all of Culver City, two bedroom, two bath, about a thousand square feet is gonna run you about $650,000. That's not including the HOA fees. They, those will vary depending on the building. Now, if you are looking for condos, you are gonna be probably most likely in the southern section of Culver City in the Fox Hills area. And I forgot to talk about Fox Hills area. There is the Westfield Indoor Mall. It's a pretty large mall. It used to be the Fox Hills Mall when I was growing up and it was one of the places to go for sure. I used to go there as a kid and I really love going there. Now it's a little bit more upscale when Westfield took it over, but it's your pretty typical indoor mall expectations of what you're gonna find there. But I didn't mention that before, I should mention there. There is a lot of condos surrounded in that southern section of Culver City, uh, but that actually puts you really close to LAX if you are someone that likes to travel. The other place you're gonna find more condos is kind of in that downtown area. We're gonna find more of that mixed use uh, mixed use buildings. Now, I mentioned Carlson Park, which was that little neighborhood park and right by right by downtown area. So that's gonna be one of your more pricey areas. For a 1,500 square foot home there, you're gonna be paying about $1.7 million. Now, 
let's say you don't want to live right in the in, in the downtown area arts district you want a little bit more of breathing room escape you want some views well culver city has something called culver crest and it is a hillside community there it's a lot more expensive for a 2,000 square foot home we're looking at about 2.3 million but again the reason is you've got some pretty spectacular views you're in this hill community where there's no reason to be there unless you live there. So nobody's coming in and out of the neighborhood. There's really only one way in and out of, of Culver Crest. And it's, uh, it's a really neat place to live as well. There are some less expensive places in Culver City like Sunkiss Park, which is kind of a little bit uh, north of the Culver Crest area uh, and some other neighborhoods in Culver City. If you want more details on housing prices in different pockets of Culver City, make sure you reach out and I'll go over the details with you. So. This is what it's like to live in Culver City. I think it's a fantastic place to be. Uh, it wasn't much when I was growing up. Again, it had some connection to me because I had family there and it was special to me that way. But Culver City has really come into its own. It's become its own destination, a live, work, and play community. And uh, it's become quite popular. And you can see why from the list that I went. So again, if you like what you see, make sure you subscribe to the video, tap the bell to get notified, hit the like button, make comments, ask questions, I, I always answer. And if you are thinking about making the move, relocating to Culver City, Los Angeles areas, reach out to us, phone, text, email, WhatsApp, and we'll set something up to discuss your moving goals.